Hello, in today's video, I'm going to install new Red Hat 9. As of today, Red Hat have a Red Hat 9.1. First of all, you have to go to the Red Hat website. There is a free version in the Red Hat developer, developer.redhat.com. You can do, go to the download and download the Red Hat at no cost. I already have downloaded this. It's very easy, just downloading. You should have an account in Red Hat Developer. It's a free account. Then I'm opening my Oracle Virtual Box Manager and click on New. Here I will name it with Rehill 9. Folder virtual. While I'm going to store this, I have already created a folder for this to be stored here. ISO image. I have already have this image here is it I already download it wherever you download this image just select this ISO image and click next this and attending guest OS installation setup this is part of VM not part of Red Hat I already configured this domain name and other host names that will be joined directly so I already will keep it as it's next Memory, 2 GB should be fine. Process, I will put more process during the installation. This can be changed later. Enable EFI, I will not enable it. I will use the normal BIOS setting, so I will not do the enhance this one. I will not use this feature right now. So click next. Storage, I will keep it as a, a 40 for this installation. I will not use any other installation details uh, sorry for a storage be allocate or other i'll keep it as it's click next this is the brief of this installation then i will click finish so i have been selected the storage image and where it will be stored as a vm configuration then now i didn't start anything in in this installation let me click finish here is it it will be auto start Loading the drivers now. Here we go. It's by default select my re local region. However, I would like to have English version of installation and I will use English United States as my language of, key of this. Then I will click continue. Here where the installation will be selected. Keyboard suggest a keyboard language i will keep it as a english time i date this can be configured later by default it's figuring out where is my country and select it by default i will keep it as it's connection to red hat if registration would like to have it i would not have it right now installation source it's the iso source already configured software selection click on this by default this is the most common server with GUI in some situation you may select different however for my lab I will keep it as it's there is a lot of package sub package you, you may configure it directly however for me I would just keep it as it's with server root GUI K dump here so with the software we have finished localization we have completed this with the system, near the most configured things that we will change it. Installation destination, the storage. You may use automatic. That will create all sub directory from root slash boot, everything automatically, or you may customize it. Let me customize this and click down to go to the customization list. Here in the customization list, we have to create at least two partitions, one for root and one for boot, along with the swap. Swap is a part of memory, however, eventually it's a, it's, it's, it's a, it's a local disk reserve for memory. So I have 40 GB, gigabyte, 40 GB byte. Let me start at LVM can be uh, configured for a normal root, and the swap. However, for boot, because LVM 
will not be loaded so put should be loaded before everything it should be only standard partition if i keep it for example with lvm logical volume manager and click plus and select a slash boot it will not work let me give a boot the recommended one gp byte and see there will be errors or something then we will correct it let's see how this will work at this point point we will keep it like this i will add 2gp to the swap 2gi and i will add breast to be for slash root as per the documentation slash boot should not be with the device lvm and you can see it's been changed directly to be standard partition over here it's lvm and here it can be LVM. So it's system automatically changed this to be standard disk. If I put it LVM and continue to an error will come to us. Let me change this to this and click done to see the error come for slash boot. Let's see this error done. No error, click for details. And if you click on the details slash put file cannot be LVM. So I have to correct this. Slash put should be only standard partition. Then provisioning advanced storage that's have a LVM plus thin provisioning where the storage will be with the thin provisioning. There is a thick and thin provisioning. Thin it will be allocated as used only and it may have a greater value of real, more than the real storage that will be used for advanced storage management so just for this for this for, for, for our customer custom installation let me just correct the boot to be uh, with the correct device type file system there is a lot of file system xfs is the most common one you will see it will be selected by default swap is a swap value of swap others details can be let me use us uh, can be found in the advanced uh, or details of documentation however let me use a label that will help me in any storage in future so boot i will call it, call it boot swap i will call it swap and root Okay, main for example, and with this, I have configured the storage with manual partitions slash far slash usr slash home boot. All these can be configured here as well. For example, I can just click plus and select these, or if it's not there, I can create it manually, home or whatever. However, for me, I will, because all these by default, if you didn't mention it here, it will be part of slash root. So I will keep everything for my uh, flexible management later to be part of slash root. And then I can just uh, use it as a, a whole storage. However, in production, you have to design it with the best practice or best tested from the application vendor that you are going to use. It's recommended to have segregations of all partitions for slash roots so, so, and slash home, slash var, slash USR, all these. It's recommended to have it in separate uh, partitions and the storage as well. Even for uh, managing or for applications used, mostly we would create different disks, even for performance perspective have many disks rather than having same disk for all installation disk.
So with this, we have configured the main storage here. This is the most common customized place that you will have. As you can see with Red Hat 9 and 8, mostly nothing changed at this moment. So I'm um, being completed with this manual partitions. Destroying, yes, please accept the change. So this is the key, I'm kernel them. If there is any kernel crash, as you can see this mechanism will have a separate a reserved memory that will write anything in the kernel them. Uh, in the protection, yes, it's recommended. If you have a short storage, don't enable it because with this there will be a reserve reserved memory. So it will consume more memory automatically based on the kernel loaded in the memory or manually if you would like to have a specific memory to be finished. However, in my lab, I will not use it. That's because my memory is very short. So let me keep all memory for my lab instead of kernel. I'm not care about any cache in my lab. However, in protection, it's recommended to use this mechanism of kernel dumping. Network host, I may configure it later on. Security profile, if you would like to use any security, you can select, for example, PCI, TFS, or any other profile that's already really configured by the Red Hat uh, package. So this will help you to uh, don't spend the time uh, for enhancing the security or configuring the security. Personally, I do recommend that I configure every security by my hand following the document definitely. That's because I will be aware about details of any configured security. And select anything and click done. Just to get back so no content selected. There is a go back here. And unfortunately, I am my screen resolution is not showing all. So let me just keep it as it's. And before I can start begin, I should write a root password. So I will use a simple password. And I will allow root by default here. And yes, that's the new. By default, it seems that SSH login with the password is not allowed for root. So if I click here, it will be allowed. Otherwise, the default will be don't allowing SSH for root. So let me allow root to use SSH. So I will be able to connect directly and click net done. That's showing me that password is very weak. Yeah, I have configured this to be start. Then I will click done here to revert me back to the main installation summary so now if you can see I'm able to click on the begin installation let me click on this begin installation and here is it this will spend a little bit time till this could configure everything for my installation let's wait and see this after a while we will come back after completion Reboot will be required. Let's click on Reboot. Rather than admin root user, let me create user called admin. There is a choice for enterprise. This is a new array hell 9. Let's click and see this. If there is enterprise login, allow existing centralized managed user account. For example, if you have a domain, and this domain will be part of this Active Directory or other things that's the enterprise login. For my login, I will create only local, local login without this domain. So without enterprise login, I will use, if I click enterprise login, it will ask me about the domain, enterprise domain or release name, then the username and password. So for me, I will just create a local ordinary user admin and username is admin i will click next password again i will create a weak password they will ask me yes start started and let's see how the new GUI is going to show the new icons and other things let's see 
here we go on okay, king right so the terminal see the terminal whatever GUI they are introduced again once we finish and complete we will revert back to our regular re uh, powerful command line cli terminal settings everything we will use here so uh, after that i can assume that i have downloaded and installed the 9 whatever post installation or others we can configure it as regular hill new features there in Rehel 9 maybe let in another videos we will start seeing this for, how, for the purpose of this video how to install Rehel we have completed this so we have completed the installation with the custom storage for Rehel 9 let's just get the etc red hat release Rehel 9.1 has been installed and run successfully. Thank you for watching this video and see you in another video.